A seven-year-old child shows crowding with the mandibular anterior teeth in a class one molar relationship and no physiological space is left. What should be the treatment? Now, the most important information that is given in this question is the age of the child. Okay, why is that important? Is because when we know the age of the child, we can try to assess what is the type of dentition should be expected to see in a child of this age. So here the child is seven years old, right? So the kind of dentition we will expect to see is that the child has just entered into the mixed dentition stage. So what will we see? We will see that the first permanent molars have all erupted into the arches, okay? And what else we'll expect to see is the transition that is taking place between the from the primary incisors into the permanent incisors, okay? Now, when this transition takes place from the primary incisors to the permanent incisors, okay, especially in the mandibular arch, what can happen is there can be two situations that can happen. Either there will be exfoliation of the deciduous teeth, okay, which is followed by the uh, eruption of the permanent incisors. Or the second situation that can happen is before the deciduous incisors have been exfoliated, the permanent incisors can start erupting lingual to them, okay. So, this is again, it will create an illusion that there is a malocclusion that is taking place uh, okay or there is a crowding that is seen in the lower arch but this is actually a transition stage and this is a self-correcting type of a malocclusion okay because once the deciduous incisors will be exfoliated okay so either they will already be mobile okay or even if they are firm they can be extracted and these incisors, these permanent incisors that have erupted lingually, okay, they will be pushed labially because of the pressure from the tongue. Okay, so they will come into their original or they will come into the space that they should have occupied. Okay, so this is a self-correcting malocclusion. So although it gives a appearance of a malocclusion or appearance of crowding initially, it will be corrected eventually. Okay, so we have a similar situation even in this clinical question where there is uh, some amount of crowding with the mandibular anterior teeth. Right now, what are our options that have been given in order to correct this situation, or what should be the treatment we have been asked? The first option is serial extractions. Okay, so would we do serial extraction in such a case? Now, serial extractions is done in those situations where the tooth size arch length discrepancy is about 10 mm. Okay, so whenever the tooth size arch length discrepancy is more than 10 millimeters okay that is when that situation or that is when the patient will be indicated for serial extractions but from this question we are not getting any sense that this patient is going is the patient has a tooth, length, uh, tooth size arch length discrepancy of such a uh, big amount okay because here we have just been told that there is uh, some crowding that is seen with the mandibular arch okay and there is no physiological spaces left now, this physiological spaces point they have given just to confuse you. Physiological spaces are those generalized spaces which are seen with the deciduous dentition. Okay, but these spaces are going to be utilized during the transfer or during the transition from the primary to the permanent incisors. So, the fact that there is no physiological spaces left is not something to be worried about because this is the normal situation where the these spaces are going to be utilized in order for uh, the incis the uh, proper uh, transition of the incisors okay so this uh, the physiological spaces is one of the parameters that helps to overcome the incisal liability okay now incisal liability is again an important uh, topic that could be asked in the exam okay so as we know that the mesiodistal dimension of the permanent dentition or the permanent incisors is greater than the mesiodistal dimension of the deciduous incisors right so this difference in the space that is required by the permanent incisors is known as incisor liability so this physiological spacing is actually uh, utilized or used up in order to overcome the incisor liability so the fact that there is no physiological spaces left is not a con uh, is not a reason for concern okay then we have been told, so serial extractions is not indicated. Then we have been told whether to do proximal slicing of the lower incisors. Now in proximal slicing, this is not a very conservative uh, approach because we are going to be removing some amount of tooth material from the permanent dentition. 
okay but uh, why should we remove any tooth material when that we know that this crowding that is going to be seen in the mandible anterior teeth is something that is going to self correct okay also the age of the child is only 7 years old the amount of space that is going to develop because of arch length okay increase in arch length there's still arch length increase that will happen because of growth okay and secondly there is still leeway space that is going to develop right so leeway space is the difference in the mesiodistal diameter between the uh, cde okay that is the uh, primary canine and molars and uh, the mesiodistal diameter that is going to be occupied by the permanent canines and premolars so the space that is occupied by the deciduous posteriors is more than the space that is going to be occupied by the permanent posteriors which gives us an excess space known as the leeway space so that again is going to be Uh, that is going to develop later on so that again will give us extra space in the arch so we are not in a position right now where we can assume that this child is going to suffer from crowding in the permanent dentition because there is still so much scope for growth and uh, exchange of uh, teeth that has yet to, to take place right so this again can be ruled out this option can be ruled out similarly bilateral extraction of posterior teeth this again can be ruled out because for the same reasons why we are not doing uh, serial extractions or proximal stripping because we don't want to do anything uh, that is not conservative at this point where the child is still very young and still has a lot of growth that is remaining so the only uh, correct option here to do would be to wait and watch okay so this is the correct answer because uh, we are still too early in the mixed dentition stage to say that this child is going to develop crowding or this child is going to have arch length discrepancy okay plus if you know that this kind of crowding that is seen in the mandibular anterior region is something that happens commonly and something that is going to self correct then it does not require any additional uh, intervention okay now the types of self correcting malocclusions okay that we see from the gum pad stage to the permanent dentition okay these are again is an important question that could be asked in the examination the most commonly asked self correcting malocclusion that is usually asked in uh, different different ways is the broadband phenomenon right that is the ugly duckling stage the broadband phenomenon or the ugly duckling stage okay this is usually uh, the kind of self correcting malocclusion which they ask very routinely in the exam but this uh, uh, crowding with the lower anteriors this again is something that is commonly seen something that worries the parents because of which they can report to the dental clinic so you need to know even this clinical situation is something that could be self corrected so we do not need to do any intervention rather we will just wait and watch